Hello and welcome to an intro to Baskerville video tutorial on scheduling batch jobs for high performance computing. My name is Jenny and in this video I will cover the benefits of using high performance computing, the system architecture on Baskerville, how to run batch jobs including how to request GPU resources for your job, how to access software by module loading applications, and finally how to transfer files to and from Baskerville. High performance computing, otherwise known as HPC, typically involves connecting to very large computing systems elsewhere in the world. These other systems can be used to do work that would either be impossible or much slower on smaller systems, such as your laptop. HP resources are shared by multiple users, and the standard method of interacting with such systems is usually via a command line interface. To connect to Baskerville from your local machine, you would usually use SSH via a terminal. Once you do this, this will drop you into a login node, which is an access point from where you would run your batch job. You cannot run any jobs on a login node, as the hardware is only intended for basic tasks such as uploading data, managing files, compiling software, editing scripts, and managing your jobs with Slurm. In order to fairly distribute a cluster's resources amongst a group of users, a software tool known as a scheduler is used. In our case, this is Slurm. Slurm implements a queuing system which distributes jobs to the cluster as resources become available. This factors in priority so that high frequency users do not dominate the system and resource requests such as wall time and GPUs. It's always best to schedule the minimum amount of resources required to complete your job so that the scheduler can fit you higher in the queue than otherwise. Once your job is scheduled to run, this will occur on a compute node. Baskerville comprises of 52 compute nodes, each with 72 Ice Lake CPU cores, 512 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and four NVIDIA A100 GPUs with 40 gigabytes of memory each, except for six nodes with 80 gigabytes of memory each. All GPUs are meshed with NVLink, allowing for direct GPU to GPU communication. Both login nodes and compute nodes are connected to the global storage where you can access your data. Let's now take a closer look by connecting to Baskerville via SSH. Type SSH followed by your username at login.baskerville.ac.uk. Enter your one-time passcode from your authenticator that you set from your first time logging in. A link to the video tutorial covering first time access is given in the description box below. Once this is done, you are now connected to a login node on Baskerville, as indicated by the prompt on the command line. Login nodes on Baskerville normally end in U16A, U18A, and U20A. My underscore Baskerville is a useful command to know that will show you the project names you are registered with, as well as their associated QoS. This information is important for scheduling batch jobs, as we will see later. You can also view this information and more on the admin.baskerville.ac.uk website. Type PWD to print your working directory. After SSHing into Baskerville, you will typically be in your home folder, where the path is of the form slash bask slash homes slash first initial of your username slash your username. My underscore quota will show you how much of your 20 gigabytes of home directory storage has been used. However, we expect your research code and data to live in your project directory, where you are allocated one terabyte of storage as standard. The path to your project directory follows the pattern slash bask slash projects, and then the first initial of your project name, then slash project name. Use df h dot to check your disk free space, where you can see that in this example, 70 gigabytes has been used out of the total one terabyte available. We're now going to cover how to run batch jobs using Slam which starts with writing a shell script that specifies your resource requests, followed by setting up your software environment, and then executing the commands that you'd like to run for your job. In these examples, you will need to use a text editor in the command line interface, such as Vim or Nano, which are quite tricky to get used to if you've not used them before. 
I've provided links to further help to using these text editors in the description box below. Let's start by using Vim to create our job script with the command vim example-job.sh. This opens a new file where we can begin writing our commands. We always start with the shebang, hash exclamation mark slash bin slash bash, telling the program which shell to use when we run our script. We follow this with our resource requests, which always start with the hash sbatch directive. We specify the QoS, account, given by your project name, and the wall time required, which is one hour in this example. Note that we haven't asked for GPU resources just yet. Then we always initialize our environment with module purge and module load Baskerville. In this example, we write a simple code while echoing the name of the compute node our batch job is running on. Save and close Vim with escape followed by colon WQ and hit enter. We submit our job to the scheduler with the command sbatch, followed by the name of our job script. Once this is done, we are given a job ID. Here it's 488661. The command sq displays the status of our jobs, indicated by the letter R for running. You will also often see the status pd, which stands for pending. When your job has completed, type ls and hit enter to list the contents of your working directory. Two new files have now appeared, a slam.out file, which shows the printed outputs from your job, and a slam.stats file, which summarizes the finished job statistics, such as the hardware related to the job or the job exit code. In this example, we can see that the job completed successfully with the exit code 0 colon 0. Let's take a look at another example with a non-zero exit code. Edit the job script file with Vim. We're now going to write a program that will fail. Define numerator equals 10 and denominator equals 0. And divide the numerator by the denominator. S batch the job script and use SQ to check its progress. When the job is complete, catslam.out will show that there is a division by zero error and catslam.stats will show exit code 1 colon 0. The number to the left of the colon indicates that the user program failed, whereas the number to the right of the colon shows that the slam job finished successfully. In this next example, we will request a wall time that is too short to complete the job at hand. Here, we change the wall time to one minute and then use the sleep command to pause execution for 120 seconds, followed by an echo statement. After the job is complete, the slam.out file shows a slam error and that the job was cancelled due to a time limit. This time in the slam.stats file, we see the exit code 0 colon 15. This indicates that the user program itself didn't fail and that the failure was triggered by Slam itself. Often, you will find that you would like to cancel a job that's already in the queue with a pending or running status. Type scancel followed by the job ID to cancel a job. Working on a HPC cluster like Baskerville is not quite like working on your laptop or desktop. In order to access software in your batch job, you need to module load applications, which are system-wide installed applications that are built and optimized for Baskerville, resulting in better performance and compatibility. However, module applications are not easily customizable, and sometimes the module that you want is not available on Baskerville. Although the Baskerville team are happy to install applications at your request. Just send us an email. If you're interested in self-installing software in a condo environment, then I recommend you check out our Baskerville portal video linked below, which covers this topic in great detail. Let's take a closer look at module loading applications on Baskerville. You may have noticed in our example job script that we always initialize our environment with module purge and module load Baskerville. We can list the modules available on Baskerville with module avail. Although we have so many applications installed, they won't all fit on your screen. If you have an idea of what application you would like to load, in this example we use Python, then you can use module spider followed by the name of the application to see the summary 
as well as the versions installed on the system. Pay attention to the toolchain used to compile the program in the version name, as any subsequent module loads should use the same toolchain for compatibility. You can also visit apps.baskerville.ac.uk to browse with a more user-friendly experience to see which applications are installed on Baskerville. When you module load the application you require on a login node, you will notice a warning that the application is not available since you are not on a compute node. For this reason, you will need to put your module load statements in your job script and then submit the job to SLAM where the software and module load command will work on a compute node. Let's look at a simple example that module loads Python and executes a simple Python script. Materials used in these examples can be found in the GitHub repo linked below. The Python script hello.py uses the socket package to determine the hostname of the compute node the program is running on and executes two print statements containing the hostname at two different times. We write a batch script as before, where this time we include a module load Python followed by the version after the usual module purge and module load Baskerville commands. To execute our Python script, we write Python followed by the name of our script. In this case, it's hello.py. And then we reduce the wall time requested to complete this simple job to improve our priority in the queue. Sbatch the job script and use sq to check the progress of the job. When the job is complete, the slam.out file shows the printed outputs from our job which includes the loaded Python module and its dependencies module loaded beforehand, and the expected output of our hello.py script. Now we have finally learned enough about the basics of job scripts to request a batch job with GPU resources. To start with, the command bask status is useful for querying the number of GPUs currently available on the system. Now let's take a look at the pytorch-gpu.py script. This Python script imports PyTorch and then uses it to print the version of CUDNN available, as well as the number of CUDA devices, device name, and total memory. The batch script we use to submit this job has some additional hash sbatch directives in the header of the file. Here we specify the number of nodes, GPUs, and CPUs per GPU for this job. On Baskerville, each node contains 36 logical CPUs per GPU and 4 GPUs in total. In this example, we are using one GPU out of the four available on the node. For other configurations, check out docs.baskerville.ac.uk. After initializing our environment with module purge and module load Baskerville, we module load Baskaps live and then module load the version of PyTorch we would like to use. Following this, we run the code with Python followed by the name of the Python script. Sbatch the job script to submit the job and then check the progress of the job with sq. When the job is complete, the slam.out file shows a long list of dependencies that module loading PyTorch has brought into the environment as well as PyTorch itself, followed by the print statements as specified in our Python script. This shows that the job is attached to one NVIDIA A100 GPU with 40 gigabytes of device memory. We will often need to transfer data to and from the cluster, and there are many ways to do this. We recommend using rsync to transfer small files and scripts, and Globus for large volumes of research data. And you can get transfer speeds of around 100 megabytes per second, depending on the network. To rsync files from Baskerville to your local machine, type rsync-zabh followed by your username at login.baskerville.ac.uk, colon, and then the path to your source file or folder, followed by the path to your destination. You will be prompted for your one-time passcode every time you access Baskerville with a new connection, which includes rsync. Once this is done, the file transfer should occur. To rsync small files from your local machine to Baskerville, type rsync-zabh, followed by the path of the source file or folder on your local machine, followed by username at login.baskerville.ac.uk, colon, and then the path to the destination on Baskerville. In this example, we transferred my underscore file.txt from my local machine to a project folder on Baskerville. And if we ls the contents of this project folder, you can indeed see that the my file.txt has just been transferred there. We recommend using Globus for transferring large volumes of research data. 
visit app.globus.org. Authentication depends on your organization, so please contact your site manager for details. If you would like to use Globus to transfer files from your local machine, you will need to install Globus Connect Personal to set up an endpoint on your local machine. In the file manager, you can use the two panes to navigate to the source and destination file or folder you would like to transfer. Here, I am transferring a slam.stats file from Baskerville on the left-hand panel to my local machine on the right-hand panel. And that's it. We've covered all of the basics that you need to know to schedule batch jobs on Baskerville HPC. We covered the system architecture on Baskerville, how to schedule batch jobs using GPU resources, how to module load applications to set up your software environment, and how to transfer files to and from Baskerville. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and see you again in the next one.